step, I'd like to show you how function parameters work in PowerShell. So to go from the simplest to the most advanced parameters in PowerShell, let's go with the simplest first. So the simplest is this one right here. I'll go ahead and bring this into my session. And with this one, you can see here that it's just the name of function. So the function declaration, the name get file, which is the name of the function. And then you have a right paren, left paren, dollar path, which is the name of the parameter. And then it's just passing the variable path into the function, into the get item code there. So just to show you what, how this is working, let's just go ahead and run get item path, I don't know, C archive or something. So that just grabs some information about the archive folder on my computer. When I run get file dash and then do the tab completion of path, C archive, same thing. So it's just passing that same variable there called path to get item. So this is a very, very basic function, and you normally won't use this. There's some very niche scenarios that you may because of performance reasons, but for the most part, you won't use this. This is just a very basic application of a function parameter called path. So let's get a little bit more advanced. So notice in this instance, I don't have path in parentheses. Instead, I have a param block. I have param, left parenthesis, right parenthesis. And inside of that, I have a parameter declaration block. It's just called parameter. And then either, and below that I have path. So this is the exact same functionality wise that the previous function has. Let's go ahead and put the, roll that in there, run this again, and it does the exact same thing. It's just a different way of expressing the function. Now, the difference in this is that whenever I run get file and do hit dash, Start hitting tab. Notice that I have all those common parameters at the end. There's a many, many, many. Every commandlet and every advanced function in PowerShell has these common parameters that are attached to each one. But going back to this basic function here, if I put this in, if I try this and do git file again, path, whatever, I hit dash, I'm hitting tab and I don't have those because at that point it's not an advanced function. I can do the same. You may notice sometimes that you have commandlet binding here. That does the same thing as adding, you can have both of these, but uh, either one, they'll make an advanced function. So that's kind of the next iteration of a function. So to get a little bit more advanced here, I'll go down to the next one. And then notice this time to compare these two, I have the same param block, I have the same parameter declaration here, but I also have inside of there mandatory. Inside of these parentheses is where you can define parameter attributes. In this instance, I'm defining mandatory, which means I have to specify this parameter. So I still have this old one in my session here. So let's just do path. Let's just do no path at all. It says cannot bind path because it is null. Well, that's probably true, but it actually let me run the function versus whenever I run this git file, no parameter, notice that it then prompts me. It says supply values for the following parameters path. That's because it's forcing me to specify the path parameter. So I have to do that. I have to put that in there before it will even try to run at all. So the parameter attributes is where this goes in here. Then also notice that I specified a data type here. This forces this parameter to be a, of a specific type or it gets converted whenever you run it. So normally whenever I ran this, when I use git file path here, this C archive backslash is a string. It's not any other particular object, it's a string. And it allowed me to do this. So right now I can run this again and it's going to run because it is a string. I passed it the right data type of what it wanted. But, you know, let's, for example, let's change it to a different one, like an integer. So maybe this time the path parameter is expecting an integer. I will bring this into my session, try this again, and it's gonna say cannot process argument transformation because it tried to transform it into something but it could not convert a string to an integer like it was supposed to. But this time I can use path and I'll put a one there. Then it actually did run. It did get to get item here, but then it failed and get item obviously because I don't have a folder called one. So that is the different the next kind of iteration. And finally, what I could do here, I can actually add more parameter. Actually, this is about the fancies you can get parameter wise, just defining a parameter. But what I could do is, I can also put in various parameter validation attributes. Let's say that I want path, I want that folder to actually be there before I run get item. For that, I can run something called validate script. And then I will run test path, path, 
the pipeline variable. And so what that does is this dollar underscore represents the current value of path at the time it's ran. So let me show you what the functionality of how this works. So, all right, so let's say that I run git file path C archive, a folder that actually exists and see that it ran through just fine. However, I know that archive blah, blah, blah is not there. Let's run that. Then you can see this cannot validate argument on parameter path, the blah, 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 the validation script for the argument with value did not return result of true. This code block here has to return a value of true for it to actually get down here at all. So this is the parameter validation is another really great way to specify various validation attributes. And that may be another snip at another point, but uh, yeah, parameter validation attributes is another very handy way to ensure that the values that get passed into your function parameters are what you need.